Hello everyone. How's everybody tonight? It is day 12. One, two, day 12. And uh, we're going to do the last day. And that is a little candle. So we're finishing the 12 days up tonight. And then I have a bunch of days. I have to go back and see who all entered for the 12 ornaments. So I'll do that tonight as soon as I'm done here. And put all those names on a piece of paper. And then I'll draw one out and I'll get that sent out to you so that you can get your 12 ornaments, hopefully before Christmas, depending on where you live. Um, they'll probably go USPS, so it shouldn't take long for them to get um, somewhere. There we go. So, trying my iPad tonight. See if I can keep a signal. But, now I don't want to be on full screen. <laughs> Technology. Why do we need it? Um, okay, let me X out of that. <laughs> Let's just hear that over and over again. One moment. This is what Kristen Calhoun said don't do is don't work on your technology while you're live. Guess what, Kristen? When else am I supposed to do it? Because I can't test it before I go live. <sighs> let's let's try. Now it's gonna just Talk to me. Now it's gonna just talk to me. Okay. <laughs> yep. Let's listen to that over and over again. Okay. We're just gonna turn the volume all the way down on the iPad. And then I see there's two comments, so somebody must have commented besides me. Um, but I actually only see one. Let's go this way, maybe. Hang on, somebody sent stars. Woo woo! Thank you. Thanks for sending those stars. Um, there we go. Hi, Judy. I know, right, Judy? I did watch that, and Kristen it was so hilarious what you were not supposed to do. So I won't guzzle any water or do anything like she did. Um, hey, Deb, Kelly, Judith. There's another Judith on here. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I just need to go this way. So, let me use my painterly shipment. I'll lean my iPad up against that. I have someone who ordered painterly and she had surgery and she can't pick it up. So her package is still sitting here. I feel so bad for her. She can't have her package. Hi, Lori. Um, look at that Santa. I got my tree back from the Haymow. She had all of my ornaments and a bunch of my, bunch of my stuff there and OMG. 
she sold almost every single ornament. That tree is full, and then there's a small little stack that she sent back. And I had a tote full of ornaments. Fantastic. Thank you everybody who went to the Haymow to look at my ornaments and purchase ornaments. It was amazing. Um, but I picked it all up today and then I found this Santa um, at the thrift store. And uh, I have seen two of them there before. And I really liked them, but I didn't want to buy any Christmas stuff. I was like, nope, I'm not buying it. He was $4. He's big, too. He's big. Like, he's big. And he was $4, and I was like, no, I'm not gonna buy him for $4. And uh, so I, there were two of them. This one's kind of um, vintage-y because someone must have left him in the sunshine or something, but he's a little on the vintage side. And the other one was nice and white. And nope, he was $4 too, wasn't buying him for $4. I know, he's cute, right? He's got little boots on, he's got a bell in his hand. I never picked him up, I never touched him. I just walked right on by. Twice I had seen both of them there and I didn't buy him. So that was, I haven't gone to the thrift store in probably a month. Work has been so crazy that I don't get there on my lunch. And so I haven't gone there for probably a month. And so I go there today and this one is still sitting there, but the other one isn't. And I passed him by again. And then I heard the checkout girl say something about Christmas is 50% off. And I'm like, oh, that would make him $2. I'll buy him for $2. So I went back and threw him in my cart and um, then I get up to the checkout and I asked the girl, Christmas is still 50% off, right? And she said, no, it's 75% off. So wait. So I got this Santa. Then I got him home and I looked at his tag. He is a, he did ha have a battery compartment there. And I looked at his tag. He's a Hallmark. Polar Express Santa. So I looked him up, $25. And okay, Wilson turned him off. Wilson put batteries in him. This is all he does. Remember, the magic of Christmas lies in your heart. So wait! He works. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep him, give him to my sister, or put him on my website. Tell me what you think. But he's pretty cute. And he's Hallmark. Why didn't I look at his tag the first time I walked by the two of them? I'd have totally got him then and put him on my website. Okay, <laughs> enough about the Santa. Let's do the candle. So I started the candle, I finished them last night, and I just want to get these 12 ornaments sent out. Sounds like a sister thing? Probably. She likes that kind of stuff, so I'm thinking he might go to my sister. She ha actually has our family over for Christmas, so I usually take her some kind of gift for Christmas, so that might be it. Um, so I finished this up last night. I thought it was really cute. Um, we're gonna do, I only did one of them. We're gonna do three more tonight. I painted the background in crinoline. So in case anybody is wanting to know, it's all in crinoline. And Deb, thank you for the stars. Bobby, thank you for the stars. And hello, Bobby. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. I will draw him on my piece of paper and then we're going to paint him up with the DIY paints. So we will have him done tonight, that's day 12, and we'll have all 12 days done. I'll make the list. Wilson will draw a name out of there and I'll ship it to you. So hopefully I have that um, 
by tonight, I have the name of who the winner is and I'll have all 12 ornaments out. All of these ornaments that went to the hay, the hay mound, all the cardinals sold. So I wouldn't be able to, I only kept one cardinal and that was for the giveaway. So all of the cardinals sold. <coughs> some of the churches, some of the holly, um, but I'd have to paint more cardinals if I wanted to give more than one set, if I wanted to put more than one set on my, on my website. So it's too close to Christmas. We're not going to worry about that. Um, unless somebody sends me a message and says, Hey, I want that. Um, okay. I'm going to point you down and we're going to get to work. We got work to do. All right. Okay, hang on everyone. Okay, let's see where I ended up. And here is our candle. I think I should have you all in there now. Okay. So how I paint this is a little bit like we did the holly in the first or second day. I'm not sure when we did holly. But it's a uh, wet, it's a, uh, your paint surface is wet when you do the background. So um, I will show you that when we get to that part. The first thing I start with is the circle of the top of the candle. So the circle of the top of the candle is, you know, just an oval and it's going to have the wick that comes up there and then it has the flame, right like that. Then you're gonna come down with that candle, make the cylinder, and that's all it is with a candle. This is going to be a little on the dark side to make kind of a shadow. There's going to be a little rim around here to make it look like that candle's kind of sinking, that like the center is more, it has more depth to it. And then a little bit of the drippy wax coming down the side of the candle here. And again, you can make this as drippy as you want, not drippy. We're gonna do this one kind of right over the whole side of the candle. And then you can even make, you know, sometimes your candle kind of bleeds in globs like that. So I like to leave the center a little bit on the open side. So as many drips as you want. Then someone, in case you um, are having a hard time with the holly, I had watched someone make a holly leaf. So they put a straight line out like that. So that's their holly leaf. And then they just made two lines like this, which I thought this was pretty interesting. So in case you have trouble with a holly leaf, go ahead and try this. Then you make that first diamond shape and then swoop and then another diamond shape. And there's your holly leaf. And we're going to make a few of these. This one's going to be on top. So a diamond shape or a triangle shape on there. Sorry, triangle, don't know my shapes. And then you can do a C and a C and back to a triangle shape.
Pretty easy, huh? And then of course, when you're painting, you just fill that all in and it, you don't have that crosshatch look to it. Or you can do like I did and just make that holly leaf right there. And then we're gonna fill it up with berries cluster of berries and a few in this area which are all connected by stems. And that's it. I will let you screenshot that. It's not the prettiest looking thing. <laughs> not when it's drawn with a marker, but it's those are pretty easy shapes. So this is gonna be a pretty easy one to, to do. So I have this one that the background is done. And then I have these two that the crinoline is done on. So this one has, um, it's the wet on wet technique. So this one has the aviary in the wet technique. And then it also has fire starter on the wet technique on the top. I want to make like a little flame on the in the back there. So that's what that is actually doing. So we're going to put some aviary onto a plate. And fire starter is what we need. A little fire starter. And then we also need queen bee. You can use um, liquid sunshine. Oops. I just don't have any open right now. So I'm using queen bee. But you can use liquid sunshine or you can use summer crush for your orange, whichever one you like. And then we're gonna use a bit of a bigger brush. I'm gonna grab one. And we're gonna go ahead and mist. We're gonna mist the ornament these two, at least, we're gonna leave that one alone. We're gonna miss these two. So they're nice and wet. This is a technique we learned a while ago. And we're gonna take this aviary, make sure your holes are at the top. And you're gonna make leaf-like patterns. And the water is just going to move it all around. It's okay wherever it goes. Let it go. This one, not quite watery enough, so we'll put a little bit more water in there. Okay. That's the fun part. So if you haven't tried that from the holly, make sure you try that. And then uh, I think we can go ahead and put some of the orange in this ornament while our green is a bit on the wet side. You might, if you're nervous about it, you might wanna wait until it's dry. I don't, I'm never nervous. I just go ahead and give it a shot. So we're gonna put some orange in there. Well, the orange was, and it did the same thing when I did it, it was a little too bright for my taste. So I went in with a baby wipe and blotted it off. Misted it again, 
and kind of smeared it with my finger. You're just getting that little bit of that glow. Now we're gonna do it on this one over here. You can probably like take most of your paint off your brush so there's not so much on it and you'll get more of a glow, more of a slight glow back there. Now we're gonna let those two dry. We're gonna take this one. And scratch that one. It's only paint. You're so late. You're not late, Mary. We just started. I just showed off my Santa for a bit. All right, this one I had already done that to, and so I'm going to mist it again. And this time I'm going to use the Queen Bee, and I wanna put that glow of the flame in it. And I'm letting that water carry it wherever it wants to carry it. And that's it. We're gonna dry these. get ready for the next step. Okay, we're gonna put a little queen bee on these, these two right here. So I'm gonna flip them around so that the candle part is to me. And yep, gotta get them all wet again. Dry them off, get them wet. And then we're going in with Queen B and you're just gonna go in that circular motion where that flame would be. And it usually makes kind of a circle. And the reason you get them wet is so it kind of carries the paint a little bit further. It's DIY paint, so they're highly pigmented, so you don't have to worry about it not covering. And then I'm going to give these another little squirt so that it makes an irregular shape, and then we'll dry them. I just didn't want it to be a complete circle. My heat gun is forcing that water to go around. I'm okay with that too. Sometimes you get the glow of the flame in other areas. More reflections, that's actually what it's looking like. So by the time you dry it, it's really subtle. Okay, let's paint some candles. 
So the first one that I did last night was pink. And I'm okay with the pink, but I'd like to try a red one. And then I'd also like to try a blue one. So we're gonna do kind of a pinky red one, and then we're gonna do a full red one. Merry Christmas, Carol. Welcome, welcome. So we're gonna start out with the pink. The first thing we're gonna do is right in this glowy area, you're gonna go over the top again with that oval. And then make You have to kind of guess of where your holly is going to be on the bottom and make sure your candle gets down that far. Then we're gonna go in with, this time I'm going in with a little marquee red and I'm going to make that ring around that candle area, that top of the candle. Okay, that's what makes the top. Now I'm gonna go in with a little petticoat pink and the red and shadow up this candle. Giving it a pinky look, but also some nice red. And then I'm gonna blend those two together with a little bit more petticoat. And then you want that center to sink. So I'm gonna go around in the center, leaving a ridge around that candle. to make that center sink. And a little bit more. I think some vintage linen would be good on this one bring some of that brightness out in the candle. And right at the top on this edge, a little highlight. And there's that candle. Now we'll go in with the red one. We're gonna make that circle first, or oval. There it is right there. And then you're gonna bring down those sides. to make this part of my oval with my brush pointed in this way. We're gonna make some highlights on this candle.
giving it a little depth. And then bringing this circle around the top again. There's the top of that. All right, a blue candle. That's what we're gonna try is a bohemian blue one. I'm not changing out my brush, so we might I'm not clean in it, so we might get a little purple. Probably not too much. Oval. Candle comes down. highlights and then we're gonna make that oval again Three candles they'll have to dry for a bit before we go to the next step and uh, so we're gonna make some holly with aviary I'll do it with that technique that I showed you. Hey Tana, thanks for the stars. And Patricia, thanks for the stars. I have missed getting to see your live broadcast. Oh, well, Linda, you found me now. Thanks for the stars. Um, so this is how you paint Holly. I seen someone do this and I haven't ever done it like this, but they painted the straight line and then two cross lines straight and then they went and made the triangle and then we're going to do the letter c filling that all in and then we're going to make the triangle back on this side which makes a holly leaf. And we're gonna lighten it with a little vintage linen. My brush might be a little bit too big for that. Let's see what other brush I got here. Let's try this one. Okay, make the stem down, two cross bars like that, make the triangle, 
the letter C. Fill that all in. You have to make sure that you work, work quickly so that it doesn't, you don't see that ridge of that crossbar. There you go. They work pretty slick. Not gonna lie, that's a really good way to make a holly. So that one behind should have been darker. So I'm gonna fill that in. With a little bit darker aviary. And then we're gonna go in with vintage linen and make this one on the lighter side because the one that's on top should be lightest. So when I was painting this last night, um, previous to that, we were eating supper and I got a message from one of my cousins that my aunt passed away. So when I was painting this last night, I was thinking, this is for Aunt Pat. This is her candle. And uh, which was like, okay, so I have to finish this. I have to finish this candle. I wasn't digging the candle. And then uh, when I was like, oh, this is my Aunt Pat's candle. So this is for you, Aunt Pat. I hope that you and my mom are partying it up. She hasn't seen you in 30 some years. Thanks, Bobby. My mom was the oldest of the family and she was the first that was gone. So she has another sister that's still alive. So Aunt Pat, she's joining my mom. She's showing her the ropes. <laughs> Let me tell ya. Um, she shows her the ropes all right. I'm sure they've already gotten themselves into some trouble. My cousins are on here. They watch my, they watch my lives all the time. So if you're on here, girls, I'm thinking about you. Such a tough time, especially at Christmas time. And then uh, we're gonna do one more leaf because I do everything in odd numbers. And now you can see how that green background that we did helped to like fill that space. So my Aunt Pat, she was a giggly lady. She was so fun. I remember her. She hasn't been here for a lot of years. I haven't seen her. She's for a lot of years, but oh my gosh. She's a crazy lady. Her and my mom. I might take after them. with all the crazy antics. I don't know how many was in that family. I don't know. There's a lot of kids in that family. Like we have 11 kids and uh, my Aunt Pat and Uncle Al, they had a lot of kids. I don't remember how many, but a lot. Just like we did. Okay. Oh, I only did one. Oh well, we're gonna go in and put some berries in here. I don't know why I only did one. Gabbing too much, I guess, wasn't thinking. There's a cluster of berries.
Thanks, Judy. All right, we'll do these real quick. I'm probably not gonna use that same technique because I can go faster without it. So this is how I do holly leaves. <laughs> Don't follow the rules. We're gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my aviary paint so it flows a little bit easier. And then I just paint. I still need more water. I just paint whatever, wherever I think they should be. Kind of whatever shape I think they should be. More of a sloppy looking holly, bear, holly leaf. And because I paint so quickly, I can go and not do the highlights on any of them until I'm finished. And then Thank you, Mary. Um, then I can go back and fill in some of this white highlight on the leaves. Right like that. So. If you want to do them a little on the messy side, that's my style. Is a little on the messy side, making sure I have enough water so that they flow a little bit easier. It's also Wilson and my first date anniversary today. It's, now Wilson would know this, he's in the house right now, but he would know this right off the bat. I don't. Um, he would know how many years it is. I don't have a clue how many years we've been dating, but this is our first date anniversary. And I was a, was I a freshman? I might have been a freshman in high school, and he was a sophomore. And he he asked he asked my cousin to ask me out. Didn't even ask me. Ask my cousin if I would go out with him. And of course I did. All right, there's some holly. Now we'll go in with those berries. We're gonna do that super quick too. All I do is I make like a half circle and then I finish the half circle on the other side. And just make a cluster of them and go in with a little red or a little white and make a little highlight on them. 
very sloppy. And if you're clustering these together, you can cluster three of them together like that. And then when you come back with the white, that's when you're going to bust that cluster apart. And I'll show you how. You have to make sure that it's not just a big glob of red. Right now, I gotta fill up this base of this candle because I don't have any leaves down there. So I'm gonna fill it up with um, berries. So this one's on top, so that one gets white. And those other ones stay in the back, so they stay the, the bright red. This one's on top, it's gonna get white. That one's on top, this one is on top and there, so it's just a little shadow in the background. So it busted that cluster of berries up. That's it. Little black dress. And my small liner brush. With a mist of water. Um, let's go with this one. This one was done first. He didn't show up for the first date. Yep. Yeah, this is our the date this is the day where he actually did show up. But yep, yeah, you're right, Bobby. He didn't show up for my for, for our first date. Very good memory. So this is a week later because he didn't show up. And then this one, I didn't want to go with them, but my sister made me. And oh, I'm so happy I did now. <laughs> He's not here to hear me. So we're just lining those holly, holly leaves and berries with a little black dress. I'm gonna make that wick right through the top there and make sure that it's long enough because we're gonna add a flame to that. And then we're gonna come back and make the drips. We're doing this so that everything has a chance to dry. So no matter how you put these leaves on there, when you outline them, you can make them look however you want. Which one's on front or in front, which one's on top, like this one's back behind, so you can't really see it, but it's the impression that there's a leaf back there. There's only one on this side. And then we need that wick. It's got to stick pretty close out the top. And then I don't want to do that shadow mark yet because I don't have any paint, um, lighter paint mixed with it yet. So we'll get that in a minute. Yeah, she did remember. 
Thank you, Laura. I made Christmas cards for my niece today. I put a candle in a street lantern, then Holly twisted around the post. What fun. That sounds great, Linda. Sounds really fun. That's a fantastic gift to get and give. Something homemade. Those are the best. to connect these berries. I guess they didn't really need it, but we'll connect them anyway. Okay. We're going to put some drips down these candles. So we're going to go in with the darker, darkest of the colors. And I'm gonna use my liner brush and we're gonna make this dark color come down that candle. On that side and I like some of it to come down the front too, connecting a little bit. Cause you know those candles, they always drip goofy like that. And this one is kind of on the back side, you can still see it. They can be any kind of drips that you want. And then a little white highlight on them. To make them stand out just a touch. These are kind of fussy. What is the weather like by you? Thanks, Laura. Um, what is the weather like by us? It is, it's not too terribly cold. It's warmer than unusual. I don't know what it was today. In probably in the 30s. Which is not normal. Last year at Christmas time, we were frigid. We had some really cold days. So this is, this is unusually warm for us, which I'll take it. We have no snow, a little bit here and there, but nothing like we normally have at this time of year. All right, that candle's dripping, and now we need a little petticoat. Just 
to give it a little highlight. There we go. Another oozy candle. Now it's bohemian blue time. This always comes and drips right off of that edge. And then this side is going to be kind of on the back side of the candle. And then down the front, hanging on that edge again, being careful not to cover up where my white is because I really like that white on there. A little white. All right. Now I'm going to mix a little black and white together and stick my finger in the aviary paint can. <laughs> that didn't go so well. All right. I want a little bit of gray. And now I'm just going to make this shadowed area underneath the wick. That gives it just a bit more depth. Now we need a flame. Queen B, going in with Queen B. And you're just gonna make a tip on the top and round it on the bottom. And seeing that come through, that wick come through is perfectly okay. If it's kind of see-through, perfectly fine. Then fire starter. on one half and blend those two together. You wanna see the distinct difference between the two colors. So don't blend them totally into each other.
There we go. A little bit more lining to do, and these are done. You're gonna go around all the drips. Um and around this lip right here. Don't go through that flame. And then uh, what you wanna do is you wanna give that flame some nice shape. And then I usually make so I can see that flame or that wick through there, through that flame. And then we're gonna sign it. Need a little bit more water into my black dress. Ah. Last night when I was trying to finish this up, oh my gosh, I was, hey, calf. Looks like a candy kiss. <laughs> um, I was dropping everything. Wilson even asked me, he said, are you having a stroke? What's the deal? I dropped so much stuff and I was doing an ornament. I had a order for ornaments. So I was painting the order, the ornament order and dropping them like crazy. I really don't know what my deal was, but I could not hang on to anything. So it's a good thing I didn't go live last night because I had dropped everything. sign it. One last one and we are done. This is day 12. <laughs> you love Connie stories. I'm over exhausted. That's why I dropped everything. I forgot to say I put a package of IOD transfers I bought from you in the giant card. Oh, excellent. Well, who wouldn't like to get that gift? Lisa, I probably am overexhausted. Work is taking a lot out of me. So, I do not know if I will be live tomorrow night. I might be taking the night off. We are moving. I think I've told you this before, we are moving our manufacturing facility to a new building. A building that I used to work in. I worked in that building for 27 years. So I'm going back to a building that I've already worked in. Um, but we are in the process of moving. So my days are really long. Very, very long days. And then I come home and I try to do these. I don't know why I said I would do 12 lives because it's exhausting. But this is day 12, we are done. All right, I'm gonna pick you up. Bobby, I have lots of Connie stories. That's why I take after my mother. She had 
Uh, I gotta flip you over. She had lots of stories too, and they were always like, I cannot believe all of that stuff stuff happened to my mother, but it happens. It just it just happens. There's no why. So here are the candles. This is God's little candles. This is for my aunt Pat. May you rest in peace and be laughing up in heaven with my mom. I'm sure that they have caught up and uh, they're back to having a good time. I'm sure she missed you. So this is for my Aunt Pat, God's little candles. Look at the cute tree in the back. I know, right? You are the you are an excellent teacher, Connie. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Judy. No, no worries. Um, thanks, Lisa. Um, Bobby says, love it, love them. Kelly says, so cute, love them. Laura says, I really enjoyed the 12 lives. I'm so glad. Lori um, says, thank you. Carol says, they're beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, pink one is really cute. I do like the pink one. All right, I got a scoop. Thank you, everyone, for the stars. I will get them all recorded and make sure I have everybody in a bucket and then I'll pull out the winner. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. You are very welcome. And that was from Diane. Thank you for the fun tutorials. You're you're very welcome, Deb. Now, if you want to watch any of these, if you look on YouTube, it's easier to find them on YouTube than it is to find them on Facebook. So you just have to go to my YouTube channel, which is The Painted Photographer. Hit the subscribe button, and then you'll see every time I go live. That is one of my goals for 2024, is to do more, not lives, do more videos on YouTube. And uh, I have one that I started about Three weeks ago it was for Christmas still isn't finished I don't even know if I'm gonna finish it now anyway I probably will because that's just me oh well so I'm late big deal story of my life I'm busy I'm a busy girl anyway God's little candles a song I played on the piano did you know I took six years of piano lessons I was pretty darn good me and my sister so that was one of the th songs that we like to play at Christmas time. And uh, um, I actually, if you want to hear what the song is, head on over to the post that I did this afternoon. And I put a YouTube link in there of uh, listening to the song, God's Little Candles. All right. Watercolor teaching. You, you know what? That just might happen. Sending my love, Dad, with all of us shining down. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. Yep. God's little candles. Keep them in your heart this Christmas. And to all of you, if I don't see you before then, Merry Christmas. I'm sure I'll be on here with just some posts, probably not alive until Christmas time, until after Christmas time. So. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate every single one of your stars. You've helped me out a ton. And all of these lives have been really, really fun. And um, I hope you all a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Love you.